Here in the Northern Ireland War Memorial Museum, we love to do reminiscence. Reminiscence is very simple. It's simply uh, thinking about our lives by looking back at the past. Each of us has a story. Each of us is unique and each of our stories are so important. And by looking back at the past, very often it's a way of helping us to make sense of our own story. And the beauty of reminiscence is that you can do it by yourself or you can do it with a group of other people, maybe with friends or family members. But the most important thing to remember about reminiscence is that it's something that's enjoyable and it's something that should help us to feel good about ourselves. Objects are a great way of doing reminiscence, especially everyday objects from the past. During the course of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some objects from the collection of the Northern Ireland War Memorial that are connected with the story of the Second World War in Northern Ireland. Maybe these objects will provoke memories in you, uh, and maybe they will help you to have a discussion with your family members or friends about the past. Each of these objects tells a story about the Second World War, and perhaps you will also feel that you have a story to tell about the war as well. Our first object is in this box, and I wonder if you can tell me what you think it is. Well, let's have a look together. I wonder if you've guessed what this is yet. This is actually a baby's gas mask. In the years before the Second World War broke out in 1939, there were real fears in the United Kingdom that gas attacks would happen in the event of war breaking out. And so every adult, every child, and indeed every baby was given their own gas mask. And the way a baby's gas mask worked is that the baby would be put up inside this mask their head would be inside this helmet and their face would be peering outside of this visor. And then this canvas uh, part to the gas mask would have been tied between the baby's legs, almost like a nappy. And then this uh, rubber cylinder would have been used to pump fresh oxygen into uh, the baby's gas mask. I wonder how the babies would have felt being in a gas mask like this. Probably not too happy. And there are actually stories of babies being put inside these gas masks and falling asleep and mothers being very worried about how their babies were getting on. Thankfully, there were never actually any gas attacks during the Second World War in the UK. And so gas masks were never actually needed by the population. But we didn't know that during the Second World War. And of course, everyone was meant to make sure that they had their gas mask with them all the time. I wonder, did you have a gas mask during the Second World War? Maybe you were a baby. Maybe you were put inside a gas mask like this. Maybe you were a child and you had what was called the Mickey Mouse gas mask, named after the famous Disney cartoon character. This is a painting called Coupons Required by an artist called Leonora Green, who was based in Battersea in London during the Second World War. It was painted in 1941, and it depicts uh, a week's worth of rations for a family during the Second World War. Rationing was hugely important during the war. It was introduced by the government in January 1940 because German U-boats were beginning to sink ships, bringing much needed food into the UK and there were real issues with shortages of food and they needed to make sure that there was enough food for everyone um, to go around. And so ration books were introduced for every single person in the United Kingdom. Ration books like this. Um, everybody would have been given their own ration book and then every week they would have had an allowance of coupons that they would bring to their local shopkeeper to be able to get their week's allowance of food. I love this painting by Leonora Green because it always makes me hungry. She has painted the food um, so realistically and she's depicted all kinds of different products like sugar and butter 
and lard and meat. There's also tea. You're only allowed two ounces of tea for a week during the Second World War, which was very little. And actually Churchill, who was the prime minister at the time, said that tea was more important than bullets because it was so important that people had enough tea to be able to keep their morale up. Food has changed so much since the Second World War, but maybe if you experienced rationing as a child, you had particular favorite foods, maybe there were particular ingredients or particular flavors or things that you tasted that you really enjoyed. Uh, maybe as a child, uh, like so many children during the war, you got extra rations um, and many people did save up their coupons to buy uh, more sweets, for example. I wonder, did you have a ration book during the Second World War? Maybe you can remember, even after the war ended, uh, rationing which lasted up until 1954. I've got my basket of wartime shopping here and our next object is something that many of you will probably remember. It's this tin, which is a tin of pure dried eggs. Now, everybody was allowed at least one egg a week during the Second World War. But eggs were in such shortage that uh, they invented dried eggs. And this was eggs with the water taken out of them. And dried eggs was a really useful invention because you could actually get 12 of these eggs in one tin of dried eggs. It's basically a, a, a sort of yellowy, quite smelly powder uh, because the eggs have had the water taken out of them. And in the museum where I work, many people uh, come to visit us or we go out to visit them. And when we talk about dried eggs, people's faces often light up and they begin to tell us about how much they either loved or how much they hated the taste of dried eggs. But certainly they were very useful. I have here this book of wartime recipes and because there were so many shortages of food and rationing was in place, it was very important for people to get creative with their cooking. So very often they could be used to make omelettes or scrambled eggs or cakes. Are there any wartime recipes that you can particularly remember? Do you remember the taste of dried eggs? Maybe you enjoy cooking today. I wonder if you could tell me what you think this might be. This is a darning mushroom and it would have been used during the Second World War because as well as a shortage of food, there was also a shortage of clothing as well. And so clothing needed to be rationed. Um, factories during the war, instead of producing clothes, produced uh, uniforms for the armed forces and uh, camouflage nets, parachutes, all kinds of things for the war effort. And so there was a shortage of clothing. And in June 1941, ration books for clothing like this one were introduced. And every single adult was given a ration book with 66 coupons in it. Uh, and they needed to be very careful about uh, how many coupons they used. For example, a man's suit would have cost 26 coupons a woman's uh, coat would have cost 14 coupons, uh, leaving very little um, for other clothing. And so people needed uh, to be very careful about how many coupons they used. They also needed to be very careful about how they looked after their clothes. And the government came up with a scheme called Make Do and Mend. And they encouraged people to mend their clothing and to reuse it and to repair their clothes. And so, for example, if you had a pair of socks like this and there was a hole in them, then you would have taken this darning mushroom, you would have put them up inside the socks, uh, uh, right up beside the hole, and then you would have patched the hole and your socks would be as good as new again. I wonder, do you remember the kinds of clothes that people wore during the Second World War? Maybe you had your own clothing ration book. Maybe your mum or dad uh, used coupons to buy clothes during the war. 
Maybe your mother used a darning mushroom to repair your clothes. Maybe you like knitting or sewing today. I've got my evacuee suitcase here and inside it is our next object. And it's this. This is called a ragbag doll. And ragbag dolls were very popular during the war. Uh, we've talked a bit about the fact that there was a shortage of clothing, a shortage of materials, and clothing was rationed. And what very often happened was that mothers, uh, whenever they were saving up spare scraps of cloth, would have put them into a rag bag. And very often they would have used them to make them into a doll like this. Uh, new toys were pretty scarce during the war, like so many other things. And so mothers went to great lengths to be creative, to make little dolls like this. And you can see this elephant is made out of uh, different pieces of fabric. It's probably stuffed with uh, pieces of wool and maybe other pieces of fabric as well. And particularly for an evacuee who had maybe been evacuated from the city out into the countryside, away from their family for the first time, I'm sure a little ragbag doll like this would have brought them lots of comfort. There was actually also a booklet that was produced and it was to encourage mothers to think creatively about different ways that they could make ragbag dolls for their children. I wonder, did you have a ragbag doll as a child? Maybe you were evacuated during the war. Maybe you were evacuated from the city out into the countryside. Maybe you had different toys as a child that you still can fondly remember. This is a very significant object in our museum collection. This is a German incendiary bomb that was dropped in Belfast uh, during the Belfast Blitz in 1941. And the whole point of these incendiary bombs is that they would be dropped by Luftwaffe planes on a city like Belfast and very often they would fall on a roof or catch in somebody's guttering and there was a chemical inside that would have ignited uh, and then uh, this would have caused a fire. The heat within this bomb was uh, actually strong enough to melt metal um, and they were a very feared uh, weapon used by the Germans during the Blitz. And it's one of the reasons why fire watchers were so important during the Blitz because they needed to be ready to put out incendiary bombs like this. On the night of the 4th, 5th of May, 1941, 96,000 of these incendiary bombs were dropped on Belfast. Uh, some of them fell on the roof of Belfast City Hall. Many of them fell around the city centre and in the docks area as well. And they caused massive damage, which is why that particular night of the Belfast Blitz was known as the Fire Raid. Do you have any memories of the Belfast Blitz? Can you remember the sound of the German planes flying overhead. Maybe you were living in a part of the city of Belfast that was particularly badly affected by the air raids. Maybe you were living outside Belfast in other areas of Northern Ireland where evacuees arrived bringing tales of the destruction that had been visited on Belfast. This is Staff Sergeant Merrill Hamilton and his wife Patricia and this was a very special day in their lives because this was the day they were married on the 18th of April 1944 in Warren Point. Merrill was a Staff Sergeant in the 10th Infantry Regiment in the US Forces and the regiment was based at Bally Edmund Castle near Ross Trevor in County Down. Patricia was a farmer's daughter from near Mayo Bridge in County Down and they met one night at a dance in Warren Point and they fell in love with each other and they were married in Warren Point. Merrill then went off to fight on the European continent uh, later in 1944 
And having survived the war, he returned to the United States and his wife Patricia joined him uh, in his home state of Vermont. As you can see in the photograph, Patricia isn't wearing a wedding dress. And that's because, of course, there was a shortage of clothing during the war. Wedding dresses were very rare during the war. And so war brides often just had to wear uh, their best dress. But very often as well, brides would have maybe added a little element to try and make the wedding uh, more like uh, normal times outside of war. And this is actually a, 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 a tiara that would have been worn by a wartime bride. And as you can see, it would have maybe brought a little bit of elegance, a little bit of decoration um, to a bride who otherwise would not have been able to wear a wedding dress. There were many couples like Merrill and Patricia who got married during the war. It's been estimated that uh, 1,800 local girls married American GIs who were stationed in Northern Ireland during the Second World War. I wonder, did you ever come across the Americans while they were stationed here in Northern Ireland during the Second World War? Maybe if you were a child, you were the lucky recipient of some chewing gum or some Coca-Cola from the Americans. Maybe if you were one of those lucky young ladies who were swept off their feet by uh, the American soldiers, you got a gift of nylons, or maybe you even were able to steal a kiss.